Good morning. Quite a nice day in New York today. I said I would tell you about a friend of mine who's also always on the web. Um, he has much more followers than I am because physics is a very specialized topic. His name is Bjorn Andreas Bull Hansen. He's a real Viking out there in Norway. I'm getting to be a bit of a Viking myself. This old moustache is coming out. Anyway, so Bjorn has a very cool, easygoing approach to life. And uh, I think you will like his YouTube videos. He does one about every week. He's actually a novel, novelist, but his videos are not to do with his novels. His videos are to do with uh, well-being. Uh, a little bit of outdoorsmanship. I have to say now he's not, he's he's not he's okay at the outdoors, but he's not he's not a master. He, I mean, he goes like five miles out into the woods and, and lights a fire, and makes a cup of coffee. But it makes for great videos, and he's good to listen to. That's Bjorn Andreas Bullhens. Guess what? I sus subscribe to everything he believes in. So does beautiful Victoria. She likes it. she likes him too. Now, this morning I'm just going to do some really basics, basics, okay? Now, some, the rest of you who are doing high-flying physics know all this stuff, so you can skip and wait till the next lecture. But there are a lot of people who struggle through elementary notation for and units for energy. Now, we can have units for the following in classical mechanics. I'll begin from the beginning. Using the base units of mass, length and time, no more, that is kilograms, meters and seconds, using those, and you should go and look at some of the ways that I derived, I derived the Planck length. That's a great introduction to dimensional analysis, okay? You really should learn that. If you learn the, I, was, I taught eighth grade one time, and uh, I was doing, I derived the Planck length in eighth grade, and this girl gave me the answer, bang, like that. I said, how did you do that? I couldn't even see where she was getting it. Oh, I just put them all together to make uh, units of length. Oh, wonderful start. Because I would have to solve uh, three simultaneous equations. She did it all in her head once, bang. So, what was I saying? Oh yeah, mass, length, and time. Mass, length, and time. Now, how can you put those things together? Well, you can go length over time. You can go length over time squared. You can go length over time cubed. That's not much use, but length over time, in other words, meters per second, is velocity, and length over time squared, that's meters per second squared, is acceleration. You can put a mass on front of that acceleration and get force. You can put a distance behind the force and get work. See? Kilograms, meters over second squared times meters. Work is force times distance, mechanical work. Now, it doesn't matter whether you use mechanical work, it all relates to heat work too, right? Joule figured out the mechanical equivalent of, oh sorry, the mechanical equivalent of work in terms of heat energy. Joules are the units of energy called after him for the same reason. Poor wife he had, you know, he went to Switzerland for his holidays and Jules spent his time up at the top of a waterfall, then going down to the bottom of the waterfall and finding the temperature difference between the two. What was she doing? I don't know. This, they have good wine in Switzerland, so maybe she went and had a glass of wine. Now, so I want to talk about these units. Now, high energy theorists love to use electron volts as units of energy. I do not myself. But if they're doing it, let's see what they're doing. Okay? Now, Millikan figured out the indivisible unit of electric charge. Turns out to be the charge on an electron or a proton. Uh, as there are equal numbers of electrons and protons in an atom, then atoms and general matter is electrically neutral. But sometimes it can get unneutralized if you rub your, you know, uh, if, you, if you, you can get static electricity if you, if you, you know, rub 
your clothes against something, things like that. You won't go into the details, that's static electricity. You can upset the balance between the numbers of protons versus electrons in normal matter to get a net charge on something. And then you get indivisible units because let's say you can have two of these things, 3.2 by 10 to the power of nine, minus 19 coulombs, 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs, 6.4 by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs, but they're all multiples of this unit of charge. So therefore then it's called the fundamental unit of charge. It can also be called the charge on an electron. Same thing applies. The charge on a proton, same thing. Is the charge on a neutron? There's no charge on a neutron. Okay, so the fundamental unit of charge defines what's called the electron volt. Now what is a volt? A volt is the energy gained by one coulomb of charge when accelerated through a potential difference of one joule. In other words, charge picks up one joule for every coulomb. A joule per coulomb is a volt, okay? Volts are joules per coulomb. How many joules per coulomb of electricity do you have over there? That's the number of volts it's got. Now, so let's look at the units and the way were, the people work them out. The problem is people get bamboozled, and I do myself, with prefixes. In the SI system, we have certain prefixes. For the small, we have centi, that's a hundredth part of, milli, that's a thousand part of. Um, <clears throat> let's look at them all. Small, deci, one-tenth of, centi, one-hundredth of, milli, one thousandth of, micro, one millionth of. I'm going to stop at nano. You can get smaller, but that's what people kind of stop at. Nano was one tenth of the power of, sorry, one tenth of the power of ninth of, whatever it might be. But, well, meters, grams, or seconds. That's it, okay? Meters, grams, and seconds are all we consider, are considering. Mass, sorry, length, mass, and time. So, prefixes for the kilograms, meters, and seconds. Really it's the grams, but we put a kilo over there because people talk about that. Now, big and small. Small were these ones. 10 to the power of minus one is one hundredth. Sorry, 10 to the power of minus one is one tenth. Minus two, one hundredth, one thousandth, one millionth, and one billionth. If you like to do it that way, I don't. This is better. Now getting bigger, if you have a meter and you have 10 of them, you can say you have a decameter, right? If you have a meter and you have 100 of them, you can say you have a hectometer, 10 to the power of two. If you have a meter and you have 1,000 of them, you can say you have a kilometer, right? Or you could have a kilogram or a kilosecond. If you have mega, mega big, a million of something, a meter, yeah, a megameter is 10 to the power of 6 or a million meters. A giga, that's as far as, oh no, I'll go to the terror. 10 to the power of 9, 1 followed by 9 zeros, is a gigameter. Terra, and the same thing. Now, what can we do? We can also have volts. Okay. We can have a kilovolt, a megavolt, a gigavolt, and a teravolt, just the same way for volts. Now, for electron volts, let's see where we get a unit of energy from. The electron volt, one electron volt, E, is 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. So I put in for the E, one, followed by E, followed by volts. Volts are joules over coulombs. Coulombs cancel and what do you get left with? Joules. What are joules units for? Energy. So therefore, one electron volt is 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 19 joules, and hence, therefore, is a unit of energy. Two electron volts, <coughs> 3.2 by 10 to the power of minus 19 joules, a unit of energy. Four electron volts, oh, 6.4 by 10 to the power of minus 19 joules, a unit of energy. 
Now, why is this unit of energy useful? Well, because it's 10 to the power of minus 19. And it's the kind of energy that elementary particles have. So people in elementary particle physics use that all the time. So we call energy units sometimes an MAV, but also we can have a mega electron volt. 10 to the power of 6 electron volts is kind of an average um, elementary particle type energy, an MAV. It's 10 to the power of 6 by 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 19 joules, or 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 13 joules as a kind of unit of energy. But a very common, well, we'll do, we'll do them all. A kill electron volt, a thousand electron volts, or 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 16 joules. A very common unit of energy is the next one. GeV. 10 to the power of minus 9 electron volts. Why is it common in particle physics? Let's see why. Well, it's 10 to the power of 9 by 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 19 joules, or 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 10 joules. That's 1 GeV. Now, wait a minute. <coughs> we know, according to special relativity, this actually came out in, uh, before special relativity, I won't go into that. But E equals mc squared. So therefore we can write mass in terms of energy by just going E over c squared. Mass is E over c squared. Energy over c squared. Well, let's do it. As you can see, the meters per second squared cancel out. So mass is E over C squared. E over C squared is kilograms. That's a unit of energy. So let's look at uh, a GeV. One GeV. I already worked it out. Where did I put it? Here it is. One GeV, 1.6. by 10 to the power of minus 10 joules is a GeV. Try and remember that. It's really worth it to rem Okay, I have to tell you this about remembering things. Remembering things is extremely important. I have thousands of equations in my skull that I don't need to look up. I can throw them on the board just like that. That's part of the job, right? If you're a carpenter, you have to know the difference between picking up a, a chisel and a screwdriver. The two of them won't do the same thing. You have your tape measure. It's not going to do the same thing as a chisel. You need to be able to put your hands on the right tool. Now, we're doing the GeV. But we're doing GeV over C squared, which is what? It's a unit of mass. So we go 1 GeV over C squared. Now C is... C is 3 by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second squared. There it is there, and we square it. You get meters over seconds all to be squared. All right? Now, the GeV units are kilograms meters squared over second squared because they are energy units. Oh, wait a minute. This cancels. This cancels. So I'm only left with the kilograms. Now, 1.6 over 3 squared is 1.6 over 9. I kind of worked it out roughly. It's 0.177 by 10 to the power of minus 6. Minus 26. Minus 10. Minus 16 kilograms. And I'll shift the decimal point back and, and round it off to 1.8 by 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms. Excellent. Because that's kind of the mass of the proton. So the GeV is around the mass of a proton. 1 GeV over c squared is about the mass of a proton. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is converting from one set of units to the other. But for this particular talk, I said enough. We don't want to do too much detail in one talk, because it gets tedious. For one talk, that will do us. Converting from different units to the next, and we'll do the next. 
Because look, units get very awkward. Here, let's do uh, imperial units. 12 inches, one foot, three feet, one yard, five and a half yards, one perch. The distance of horse trots, right? Um, 440 yards, one furlong, yeah? The distance a horse gets tired of in the gallop. Um, what else? Oh yeah. Eight furlongs is one mile or 1,760 yards. 1.609 meters, sorry, how many uh, meters? Oh yeah, one mile is 1.609 meters, or 1,760 yards. Now, what about a league? In uh, old fairy tales, you have giants and they wear seven league boots. Well, one league is seven miles. Seven miles in a league. What's a fathom? A fathom is a unit of depth, it's about six feet. Okay, so that's the way imperial units work. They're all related to biological things. The length of your finger, the length of your arm, this distance, the height of a man, uh, so on and so forth, imperial. Now the SI system of units goes a step ahead because it, at least it makes things, even though you're basing your units on a bunch of things that are arbitrarily sorted out in Paris, like the meter and the kilogram, but the second is in there. <clears throat> oh, by the way, do you know what a second is? Second is very interesting. So Christopher Wren invented the second in a way. Well, not quite. Okay, if you have a pendulum clock, right? Pendulum clock is based on the principle of a swinging weight, pendulum. A pendulum <clears throat> that takes over and back one swing when it's a, a length of one meter, one meter, Length, that's a second. Very interesting. However, it's still arbitrary. <clears throat> now, some p physicists love what they call natural units when they set G equals H equals C equals 1, and that throws information. I like to be able to use the ordinary SI system and then go back to hell and can, uh, you know, when I want to. So I stick with kilograms, meters, and seconds for teaching physics because that's simple. Now, that's enough for that one because this goes on a long way. By the way, this leads into the idea of um, how many fundamental constants are there? Yeah? Are there three? G, H, and C. Are there other things like Boltzmann's constant? What's so fundamental? A great person for that is uh, Mike Duff. Right? You Google him and look at some of his uh, papers in PDF form on units, fundamental units of length. He has different arguments for different things, but Mike Duff I've had a few uh, encounters with him, and so I remember him from Imperial College in the 70s, That's as far as that. All right, then let's leave it at that. We'll stop this and post this one. Talk to you later. I'll show you some of the artwork in this apartment, by the way. Let's do that, just for fun. This is a rather nice apartment. So I have this picture here. And I've got, this is my favorite. This one is Dutch, about, about 1870. She's very pretty. She's working away and looks bored. This is a rather expensive one. It's Abraham Minchin. This one, I don't know how the, where the hell it comes from. Yeah? Outside here, I've got some that my son did. My son did this at age 10. Starry Night, you know what that is. This is New York City by my son at age 10. That's my daughter, she's very beautiful. And so on and so forth. So that's a quick look around. Oh yeah, and I make bows over here. This is a work, a workshop. Here are some bows I made. Um, English long bows and other kinds of bows. Okay, that's enough for now. Here's me and Bellucci when you, we used to work together.